We're super excited to have the world staffing sessions going on uh, for the fifth time uh, already today. Um, so Kelly Shutrop from Parker Marketing uh, will be talking about the five tips to drive ROI in your marketing strategy. I'm super excited about that. I think that's a super important topic uh, these days, uh, specifically for staffing and recruiting companies uh, to make sure to have that uh, figured out and uh, ready to go for the next couple of months when uh, the economy, economy bounces back and a lot of people start hiring again. So I'm excited to have Kelly here. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll head over to Kelly uh, to run the session. I'll be back later on. Uh, to talk a little bit about our new product candidately. If you're interested in learning more about that, uh, feel free to uh, vote on the polls to uh, uh, basically express your interest and uh, we'll be in touch with you. And you can also visit uh, Kelly's uh, booth uh, on the expo session. If you're interested in learning more about Parker, uh, you can get in touch with Kelly directly over there or express your interest. And yeah, from there, I'll hand it over to Kelly to run the session and I'll be back later. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you, Jan. And thank you, everyone, so much for joining us. Uh, unfortunately, through technical difficulties, it looks like I'm not going to be able to jump on camera. So uh, you guys can see my slides here. So we will go ahead and dive right in. Uh, like Jan said, uh, we're going to be talking today about what is your marketing missing in 2021? Top five tips for ROI. So before we get started, uh, it's always fun to basically, you know, see who's speaking, especially because I'm not able to be on camera right now. And so uh, I will actually share a couple housekeeping tips. Uh, I know that there is a live chat Q&A comment section. I don't have full visibility into that while I'm presenting. Uh, however, I will following this presentation so we can dive into all of those fun details. So like Jan mentioned, my name is Kelly Shutrup. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing at Parka Digital Marketing Agency. Uh, and I would love to just share a little bit briefly about my background. So I am a marketing nerd myself. I've spent the past 12 years focused on marketing, branding, PR, communications, and digital. And actually the last 10 years, I've focused specifically on the staffing and recruiting uh, industry, right? Like this fun, fun animal we call staffing and recruiting. Um, and so you'll see there, I've got a family, husband named Chris, son named Indiana or Indy. He was actually born right as the pandemic hit. Uh, and so that's my counter of time for how long we've been in this, this unique universe. Um, we also love travel. I've, I've attended a number of conferences, so I may have met you there in the past. Um, but that is about me. I'd love to share just briefly about Parka. Like I said, we're a digital marketing agency. We were actually created within an executive search and consulting firm. So that's where a lot of my uh, marketing passion for this space comes out of. I've been with this group of companies the last nine years. Uh, and so, yeah, they've got an executive search and consulting firm in the Minneapolis market. And ultimately we learned a lot of things, the fun way and the hard way with marketing. Uh, and then we created Parka really to help train and educate other staffing and recruiting firm leaders on how to do this whole marketing thing. So uh, why don't we go ahead and dive right in. What do we know? <laughs> what we know is that everybody used to think digital transformation was years away, right? And then COVID hit and all of a sudden it became our reality that people were going online to either confirm or discredit their decision to partner with us, right? To partner with you guys as staffing or recruiting firm owners and leaders. And so uh, whether you were thinking about marketing in the past, and that's a really big reason why you were able to grow your company, or it was not on your radar at all, it is more important now than ever to take that uh, into consideration. So I wanna share briefly this proven process that we've seen work really well across the industry before we jump into those top five tips for ROI. Now, the first is building brand credibility. Uh, so that's making sure that your online presence truly shows up in a way that represents the best people on your team, right? So if somebody, a candidate or a client has a great experience with an individual, but then they go to your online presence and it doesn't look good, that's actually going to hurt the relationship and hurt whether or not you may end up working with them. Uh, now, the second is online visibility, right? So let's say you've got a beautiful website, your social media is active, everything feels buttoned up. But if you are consistently going out and having to find new candidates, find new clients, and you're not able to attract people to you, you're just making your role more difficult than it needs to be, right? So this comes to life through things like 
creating relevant content. We'll get into that here shortly. Uh, posting consistently on social in ways that people actually care about and want to interact with. Uh, and then, of course, optimizing your online presence. And then lead generation is a topic that most people get really excited about because it's the closest to ROI. Uh, but at the end of the day, there's a lot of things that go into this, right? It's everything from running paid advertising to creating downloadable content to even uh, automating workflows to stay in touch with the right people. So the top five tips for ROI. Starting off, we're going to talk about building a solid brand that people trust. And then we're going to move into showing up online in an authentic way, then moving into attracting great clients and candidates all the way through providing them an experience worthy of a referral and nurturing the people you can help the most. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, when we talk about building a solid brand, people trust, it's important to ask yourself, how do you show up in the world, right? Who are you? Who is your audience? What is your value proposition? I mean, at a glance, you know, every staffing and recruiting firm says, well, yeah, I, I know who I am. I do staffing, I do recruiting, I do a combo of both. Um, but at the end of the day, what are your niches, right? And most people are, are segmented by a few different ones. It's either market. So are you global? Are you national? Are you in certain cities? You know, are you based in New York, but you follow your clients across the country as they have needs? Um, and do you focus on certain functional areas, right? Like sales, marketing, IT, HR, or more on industries like healthcare or consumer packaged goods or banking. Uh, and, and not only is it important to identify that, but I want you to think about all these things through the lens of how does that show up online? You know, am I making people scroll for a long time on the homepage to even get to the point of identifying what it is I specialize in? So not only who are you in that sense, but also what is the messaging you want to convey, right? What's the vibe you want people to see? Are you a high level executive retained search firm? Are you placing, you know, individuals in a staffing capacity in the healthcare space? All of these things come into play when it comes to how you present yourself online. And then who is your audience? You know, you may be familiar with um, ideal customer profiles and buyer personas, but conceptually, have you taken the time to really think about who are my key clients? And who are the people that I would love to replicate, right? Uh, those individuals that anytime they would call me, I want to make sure that I am servicing them to the best of my ability. And you may have clients or candidates that you don't feel that way about, but they're a part of making your business run. So it's important to think about, all right, what does that client company, for example, look like, right? What is the size? What is their mindset? Uh, who are the people within that that I love to have conversations with? And then ultimately, those buyer personas, right? Like, what do they care about? What are their pain points when they're reaching out to me? You know, it's easy to say in one sentence, well, they have a hiring need, but there's more to it. Are they experiencing rapid growth? Are they in an industry that has incredibly passive talent? Or are they in an industry where there's just not enough candidates in general based on the roles that are needed, right? We see this a lot in the healthcare space right now, for example. And then ultimately, what is your value proposition? So is this something where uh, when somebody hits your online presence, it says, we do IT staffing, we're the best at it, our clients love us, our candidates love us, you should work with us. You know, everybody can say that, right? And at the end of the day, a lot of clients and candidates, for better or worse, view this industry as more of a commodity approach. Um, now, you and I know that so much of it is about relationship, great process, providing a great experience. But if that doesn't ring true on your website, how do they know whether they should work with you or your competitor? And so that value proposition uh, is really important. Now, one way you can think about that is through the story brand methodology, as an example. Uh, this particular methodology says you as the staffing or recruiting firm are not the hero, period. Your client is, your candidate is, it's your audience who's the hero at the end of the day. Uh, and what they are trying to solve is what's most important to them. Right now, they don't care that you've done a great job for 20 years. They just want to know, do you understand my problem? And then reinforce it with credibility. So naturally, in this whole fun, complex world of staffing and recruiting, there's a lot of variety, right? Your company may say, I would love my marketing to attract more candidates. Let's say you do healthcare staffing or you do 
um, you know, light industrial staffing, that's probably where your mind's at. But if you're anywhere on the search side uh, or you're working on placing different types of candidates in the staffing or consulting space, you may think a lot about the client side. So I'll focus on that for now as an example. Let's say you are trying to attract uh, a company client who needs to hire you in your eyes, right, to do IT staffing. You may tell them, hey, we get it. You are rapidly growing. You're finding it incredibly difficult to build your talent pipeline because at the end of the day, all of these IT professionals are getting hit up by recruiters five to 10 times a day right now. And so it's an incredibly passive market and you're just having a tough time finding the right people. Well, that probably leaves you feeling stuck and frustrated and annoyed that you've spun your wheels and still have not grown the way you need to. Well, that's where we come in. We've been doing this for the last 20 years. We work with clients in these ways. We work with candidates in these ways. And if you partner with us, here's the plan that we can take together to get you the talent you need. You know, if your website and your online presence and your sales team and your recruiting team has that kind of a message, naturally it's going to resonate stronger than we're the best, you should work with us, right? So all things to keep in mind when it comes to actually building a solid brand that people trust. Now, the next step of this is evaluating your overall brand and does it convey who you are? Everything from your brand standards to your logo, to your colors, fonts, and messaging, right? So is this something where uh, you had a logo created, some company chose colors, yep, bada bing, bada boom, this is what we've been doing for years, this is just how it goes. Or is it something where you've put a lot of thought into who are we, right? Like there's color psychology. Does yellow mean cheerful and vibrant? Does green mean growth? Does blue mean trustworthy, right? All of those things. Uh, and does it live in a brand standards guide where no matter what internal individual, marketer, external marketer, individual, no matter who sees this, they understand, okay, here's how we use the brand. But not only these kind of components that you see on the slide here, like the colors and the logo and things like that, um, even more so the messaging front, right? Why did you choose to have your website be written in a voice that is professional and thoughtful? Or why did you choose to have it be friendly and vibrant and energetic? You know, all of those things are going to matter when it comes to attracting the right clients and candidates. So I just wanna encourage you to think about, you know, in this whole grand scheme of the topic we're talking about today of what is your marketing missing in 2021, top five tips for ROI, most people assume, well, ROI means let's run an ad, let's figure out who converted, let's put more money into the ad. Yeah, that's a really direct way to attribute marketing dollars. But there's actually a lot of indirect ways that attribute uh, to ROI from marketing that are just harder to, to confirm, right? So I'll give you an example. Uh, and this really goes into the next slide here and making sure that your website resonates. So let's say uh, Bob reaches out to your company and says, hey, I was referred by Janet over at XYZ. You've worked with them in the past. Uh, let's have a conversation, right? You may think the only reason that person reached out is because Janet referred them. And that may be the case. But more than likely, that individual, Bob, has spent time on your website. He may even have spent time on some of your recruiters profiles uh you know all of those things together really add up and when he comes in the door and wants to have a conversation as a potential client he's evaluating the experience you're giving him uh he's identifying all right if they sent me any sort of marketing collateral after that describes who they are that i'm going back and sharing with my team does that resonate i mean at the end of the day marketing these days in this technology you know, digital transformation era really is either confirm, confirming or discrediting someone's decision to partner with you. So if you say, hey, Bob, how'd you hear about us? And he said, well, it was a referral from Janet. I would encourage you to think about it deeper. What are all of the components and touch points that Bob needs to have both from a marketing standpoint and a people standpoint that are making that decision, right? Uh, so let's dive into your website and identifying if it presents you well or not. So most staffing or recruiting firms home pages, uh, you know, there's either a lot of taglines, a lot of jargon, or you have to scroll quite a ways to find out, okay, we focus on finance and accounting recruiting in this market, or we specialize in healthcare staffing in these verticals uh, or in these functional areas. But you just have to make it as easy as possible for people to identify why does this matter to me? 
right? And so it seems so simple, but that's a good piece of homework when this presentation is over, is to jump out to your site and look at it with fresh eyes. Are you a potential client? Are you a potential candidate? And are you having a great experience once you see the site? Uh, is the user experience easy to navigate, right? Are you making me work really hard to jump through hoops or are you feeding it to me exactly as I would see it? Uh, practice area pages are another huge area to reinforce and build trust among people. So, you know, a lot of staffing firm sites will have a services tab. And within that, you might have an accordion drop down that says, uh, we focus on finance and accounting or we're focusing on IT staffing. And here are a few roles that go within that. And that's it. You know, like that may be all you share with them, but you've got a whole team of people and you've done this for years. Well, if that prospective company who's looking for the right recruiting firm or the right staffing firm sees that one page with those few bullets that you're providing that's relevant to the searches they need filled compared to your competitor who has an entire page dedicated to it that speaks about why they're in the space, how they help companies, the actual roles they've recently placed either by logo or by, you know, size, right? Like this is the type of company, the revenue, uh, the you know, the actual title, like that, those credibility pieces, as well as here are the people you're going to be working with. You're going to work with Carl or Nate or Nick. Um, and here's roles that we have open right now. Who do you think that prospective client is going to pick up the phone and call first? It's not to say you might not get a conversation, but at this stage of the game, you know, we hear it all the time. All you need is an at bat, right? As a staffing or recruiting firm, get me the client, get me the candidate, give me the at bat and we will make the deal happen. Uh, you might not get the at bat if your online presence, specifically your website, does not put your best foot forward. So something to keep in mind. Um, on a very tactical, practical note, this doesn't always mean you have to totally gut your website and start from the ground up. I mean, if you did your site four, five, six plus years ago, yeah, it probably makes a lot of sense to do that. But if you just had it done a year ago and it doesn't have things like practice area pages or your team uh, or relevant blogs on those pages that speak to your audience, those are things that you can build into an existing site that can add immense value right away. And going back to the point I made a second ago, it doesn't necessarily mean that someone's going to say, hey, I saw that landing page and man, that's the only reason I called you, right? Like everybody uses a variety of uh, inquiries, if you will, right? They're looking on LinkedIn, they're looking on your site, they're determining what the gut feel is, is as they're talking to your team, but everything adds up. So just look at it as if everything is moving forward and plowing in the right direction, you don't want to end up giving them an obstacle that you could have controlled removing. Now, as we continue talking about building a solid brand people trust, this also comes to your overall marketing, right? your social media covers, your descriptions, your marketing collateral. I wanna show you guys an example. Uh, this individual, Joe, used to be a CFO prior to recruiting for finance and accounting talent. And rather than having you know two sentences on his profile, his LinkedIn profile in the about section, or having it just talk about his background, we've really honed it in here, right? He's retained by boards of directors, CEOs, CFOs, et cetera, in these types of industries. And these are the recent searches he's done. Now, if somebody's looking at him versus a competitor and the competitor doesn't have any of this information, even if literally they've made the exact same placements, let's say, who's going to get the call, right? Who's going to get the in-mail reply back? Joe probably is. Now, likewise, you can see that his cover photo matches in the middle of this page here, the cover photo of the company itself. So the branding is consistent at a glance. You can see, great, hire with confidence, finance and accounting executive search. Here's how I get a hold of Joe. Now that's real estate that you get to decide what to do with. If you're a recruiter or a sales individual on this presentation today, you get to decide what that is. And if you're a marketer or a leader in a staffing or recruiting firm, at minimum, you get to decide what that is on a company profile. But I have yet to meet a recruiter who says, nah, I don't wanna use that on my profile if they think it's really gonna help them, right? So take those things into consideration as tactical as it is, it matters. It's real estate, you get to own, you know, take advantage of it. Now, likewise with your marketing collateral, whether you call it a fact sheet, a pitch deck, a capabilities deck, sales enablement, sales assets, you know, it's all under the same umbrella of, if somebody has a conversation with Joe and goes, cool, thanks Joe, can you send me more information? I'd like to review it, 
right? Whether this is a candidate who wants to know more, whether it's a prospective client who wants to know more, you know, what I hear by and large is, uh, I mean, we have materials like that, but it's been, it's been a while, right? And we're, we're updating them internally and they probably could be better. Or maybe you're one of those rare companies that you're like, yep, we had it done and we absolutely love it. You know, we get great feedback from clients and candidates. Um, if you're not one of those select, uh, you know, fortunate few, think about that, right? All of the same discussion that we just had about the website matters when it comes to anything people are experiencing about your brand. So make sure you have up-to-date collateral that really reflects uh, the pain points that your audience is trying to accomplish and how you can help them. All right, now I would be completely remiss if I did not talk about the one of the biggest, biggest components about building a brand that people trust, and that is your team. Are you proud of the team you have in the market, right? Now think about this, during COVID, uh, a lot of companies, regardless of what area you specialize in, you needed to downsize and you likely needed to put your money in the producers, right? The people that are doing a really good job of making your company money. And as you're starting to grow back up and build back up, I challenge you to really think about culture just as much as you think about production. Who are the people that you are hiring? Are they going to do a great job representing your brand? And I would say the majority of staffing and recruiting firms that I talk to, you know, day in and day out are doing a good job of this because they want to protect their culture. It's not enough anymore to say, well, Johnny Recruiter or Jane Recruiter does a great job, but they don't really play nice with others, right? Most recruiters, most salespeople are people people. <laughs> uh, but just really think about that. Um, you know, are you creating a culture that attracts those top performers? Are you rewarding that excellence does it help you retain the best right if you are one of the best in your industries excuse me in your cities are you going after those top places to work awards you know all of those things are really important because at the end of the day a solid person in this industry can be pulled to a different company very easily now we've got you know the the classic one year non compete which prohibits that a little bit more um but it's just something to think about you know if you've got a company that's got immense tenure I wanna say great job to you because there's something you're doing that's keeping those people. And if you've got a company that has immense high, high turnover burnout rate, uh, start thinking about why. You know, there's a lot of variables. It's not always one, one magical thing you can change, but are you creating that culture that rewards um, individuals and promotes them? You know, one, one example that, that I've seen work really well is having a volunteer committee or a fun committee or a diversity and inclusion committee, you know, things that help bring people together. Uh, likewise, you can do things like employees of the month and naturally President's Club has been a, a big topic for this industry for a long time. You know, so it's just something to keep in mind. It doesn't feel like it directly pertains to marketing, but I would argue there's a whole lot more to marketing than most people think. So as we move out of building a solid brand people trust and into showing up online in an authentic way, Again, I just want to challenge you, think about that brand that you've created. Even though it may not be the quote unquote direct driver to ROI today, I guarantee you it is impacting the way people feel about you and whether they actually partner with you. So let's talk a little bit about showing up online in an authentic way. How does your company engage with your audience, right? Is it through blogs, social media, eBooks, webinars? Uh, I love this cartoon. What you want to say and what they're interested in and that little line between the two of relevance. Uh, you know, this industry over the last 10 or so years has really grown to realize blogging is important, social is important. But unfortunately, what a lot of that has turned into is, well, we blog for the sake of blogging, let's get one out every week, do or die. And we post every single day on social, just get something out. And I personally am a really big advocate for quality over quantity. Right. So even if that's two or three posts a week on your company pages or two blog posts a month, if it's information that people care about and it resonates with them, that's actually what matters a whole lot more. And that's actually what gets more engagement and gets more eyes on your brand and creates that thought leadership. So some examples of this would be creating a salary guide or an ebook that is around hiring trends in this weird post COVID world. Uh, or creating webinars that are relevant to the pain points your clients and candidates are having. And at the end of the day, this is not 
you know, I should say that the topics you need to speak about are not rocket science, right? Like sit down for five minutes and jot down what are the conversations I'm having with my clients that keep up, keep on coming up again and again, right? Like what are the questions I'm answering for them? What are things that they're telling me? Those are trending things that your audience wants to hear about and wants to know either that A, you're involved in that conversation or B, you've got a solution to it, right? And so those are things to consider as you want to show up in an authentic way. Uh, now, next we wanna talk about going back to that team that you've created. I guarantee there's a few people on your team that you're like, man, that is a charismatic, vibrant individual who would present well uh, if they're on video or they like to write. I know that's, I know it's a hard thing. If it comes down to a recruiter or a salesperson deciding to write a blog or have a conversation to close a deal, it's, it's not a comparison. They have to do the business, right? But if you can capitalize on a few of those key people that get really excited to share thought leadership, it can help immensely. So not only uh, does this come down to individual branding, like Joe's LinkedIn profile, and really looking at how your team uh, is showing up online, how your leadership team is showing up online, how you are, uh, but also how they're showing up in day-to-day -day conversations, right? So when we think about LinkedIn, it's busy. Yeah, it, like it, it just is. And video is becoming more and more of a trend. Um, these days, polls are a trend, which, oh my goodness, polls can be a ton of noise or they can be really valuable. So I would just encourage you that however you and your team is showing up online, make sure it's authentic. So and a couple examples and ways to do this would be, um, you know, have your team focus on what your audience is talking about, you know, like comment on interesting posts that a potential client or current candidate has shared or companies you're following and you want to be a part of because they're in your industry space. Likewise, with collaborations, you know, everybody's got their industries that they focus on and there's conferences, right? So whether it's a healthcare executive forum or something like that. You know, finding the key people on your team that want to share thought leadership and developing topics that are interesting and then partnering with other groups. You know, all of those really just are authentic and they're a lot of fun. So no matter what, I think everyone on your team should be engaging online. Uh, but again, a few key individuals is probably the best way to, you know, approach the, the brand ambassador mindset. Now, let's talk for a bit about attracting great clients and candidates. Uh, you know, we could spend a whole hour just on this topic alone, but I do think it is very important to think about all of the other areas that go into marketing, right? Like building your brand, showing up online in an authentic way, uh, but naturally great clients and candidate attraction is the closest to ROI. So let's look at just the different lead gen levers you can pull, right? So if you have a great website, if it looks awesome, have you optimized it? Now, this is really important these days. You know, a lot of times you'll go to a digital company or a development shop and they'll build a site. It looks pretty, but there's actually no formal SEO that's gone into it. So it's really difficult for people to find you on their own. So some of the things that go into SEO are keyword research, right? So we want to identify of the areas and services you provide. Are people able to search terms literally on Google? and have your website be one of those that shows up. Uh, likewise, there are technical audits that are really important to identify, is the user experience great? You know, there's there's so much that goes into SEO. Um, and I know it's one of those things that feels either like, wow, it's like our magic dust, it works great. Or it's like, I don't know, I invested in it once and it did nothing. Um, SEO has the longest runway compared to a lot of these different levers you can pull. Uh, you know, for example, it can take months for really uh, traction to activate with changes you're making on your site, but it's very important. Um, paid search, right? So whether we're talking about ads on uh, Google or uh, different types of retargeting through the Google Display Network, you know, these are cool because let's just talk about pay-per-click ads on the top of Google for a second. Uh, individuals are expressing interest, right? So they have, they're literally saying, I have intent, of finding an IT staffing firm in Dallas. And whatever pops up, they're curious to see what that is. And so it's really important that if you are investing in that kind of paid advertising, that you care a whole lot about where you send them to 
after you click on the landing page. You know, we've seen so many times where people come to us and say, well, I've been spending money on paid on Google, but it doesn't really do anything. And, you know, we come to find that they were sending people to the homepage and the homepage doesn't have any level of detail about the thing that the person searched for in the first place. Um, you know, likewise, uh, you know, it's just, it's just important to think about the types of ways you're getting in front of people with messaging. You know, a lot of people will say, well, I want client leads. I don't want candidate leads. And I wish we lived in the world where you could formally control that. But what you can control is the type of language you're using to entice your clients over candidates, um, you know, in that particular situation. Now, paid social can be really interesting. Uh, when we think about candidates on the side of healthcare, for example, you know, they spend a lot of time on Facebook. So Facebook ads can be really interesting. And then we think about, you know, the, the other types of roles that are more professional business in nature, right? So if you're looking at finance or accounting candidates, for example, obviously you can target people so specifically. You know, I spent about a year as a recruiter and a sourcer before um, focusing on marketing for this space and Boolean searches, right? I mean, I know it's something that probably makes everybody cringe because you're like, oh, I remember those, or maybe you're still doing them every day. But, you know, LinkedIn ads target in a very similar way. So you can identify somebody by uh, location, title, industry, really anything they plug into their profile, you can find them. And it's great because it allows you to proactively get in front of the right clients or candidates without them even knowing your brand. So there is more of a passive nature because if someone is scrolling through their newsfeed, it assumes that they're ready to take an action right there, but at least you're getting in front of them. Now, when we talk about the client side of paid social, uh, I wish you guys could see me. And again, thank you for your patience as we don't have video up here on this, this hop in platform for whatever reason. But, um, you know, if you picture a funnel, you've got people at the top, which are in awareness stage. And then you've got people in the middle, which are at the consideration stage. And then you've got people at the bottom, which is the decision stage. Oftentimes, let's say you have a partnership with LinkedIn for your job slots and your recruiter seats, right? And they threw in some budget for ads along with your contract negotiations. This happens all the time. And you get in there and you're like, okay, cool. I'm going to target people. Um, I'm going to run some ads. Uh, you know, we do IT staffing. If you have this need, you should contact us. Well, that is a very bottom of the funnel ad, right? It's literally saying, click here. To have a conversation. If you think about how you and I interact on LinkedIn, if you've never heard of a brand and they're asking you to schedule a call, you may not even have the need that they are talking about right now, much less you don't have any uh, knowledge of them from a credibility standpoint. It is possible you will click if you have that need, but if you don't, it's unlikely. Now, if we think about middle of the funnel or MoFu, as we uh, affectionately call it in the marketing world, uh, you know, basically providing something to them that does not expect them to raise their hand and have a conversation right now. Those types of paid social ads can be really valuable. Now, what does that look like? That can look like a salary guide or an ebook or a webinar on demand. Uh, the common thread for all of these is that it's gated content. So you drive them to a landing page and they need to enter their information, first name, last name, email, et cetera. And then they're able to download the guide or access the webinar. Now, this is really great because it's not talking about you. It's not saying, here's my IT staffing firm, you should hire us. It's saying, you know, here are trends for hiring and retaining great IT staffing talent in the post-COVID market in Denver. You know, fill in the blank of what is relevant to your audience. Someone may be very interested in looking at that, but they might not have a hiring need right now. But the cool thing that that does is it introduces the ability for you to know who's out there. <laughs> you know, like they may already be on your short list uh, of people to get in touch with, or they might not have been on your radar at all. And so now you introduce this concept of, okay, we know who's checking us out and we can go check them out. And yes, of course, you can reach out to them and say, hey, I saw you downloaded this. I'm happy to answer questions. Um, but in a best practice world, that's where we get into marketing automation. And we'll touch on that as we get into the fifth point, which is nurturing the people you can help the most of just how to transition uh, downloadable content and, and those warm leads, if you will, into actual conversations in the future. So as we look at attracting great clients and candidates, 
like I said, there's, you know, we could spend an hour on this topic alone. I mean, honestly, on each of these individual uh, levers you can pull, but I want to encourage you to keep all of these in mind. If you're doing all of them and they're all working for you, awesome. Uh, at that point, it's a matter of doubling down on what's producing the most ROI. Um, if you have dabbled in these in the past, but you're really unsure, it these are all areas worth exploring if you're a staffing or recruiting firm owner or leader um, looking to drive clients and candidates. Now, let's chat a little bit about providing an experience worthy of a referral. I want to talk to you here. What is your process when marketing does create an opportunity? So if someone uh, downloads that ebook, let's say, um, and goes through a workflow, we'll get into that in a second, and then fills out a form and says, yep, I want to have a conversation. Or let's say somebody shoots your recruiter uh, a note and says, yep, let's have a conversation. Obviously, if it's going to an individual recruiter, they're the one who starts that call. But if someone fills out a form, do you know where that form submission goes to? I mean, I know this is a really trivial sounding question, but that may be your number one homework when you hop off this presentation and off this webinar. Fill out the contact form on your company site and see, huh, if a client wanted to get a hold of us, who gets notified of that? Because we've seen it multiple times where the website was originally set up and it went to some, you know, group uh, inbox that a lot of people were supposed to manage. And then over time, nobody manages it. And you just don't realize, shoot, we missed some opportunities here. Um, or it goes straight into the owner's inbox or, you know, someone who's more of a uh, general manager in the company. What I've seen work pretty well with small size staffing and recruiting firm owners are that that email goes out to some key leaders in your organization and then somebody replies, got it. So within minutes, somebody's on the phone with that potential client lead having a conversation. Now I can absolutely appreciate that on the candidate side, this is a very, very, very different experience. You know, if we're talking, you're getting, you know, hundreds of applications because you're in the light industrial hour manufacturer, area or if you are a high level executive retained search looking for a CFO, you may handle the, those inbound leads very differently. So for this discussion, I'm talking more about the client side than the candidate side. Um, now, when those potential clients come in, who has ownership over that process, right? If Steve goes, got it, and he sends out an email and doesn't hear back and he gets busy and he goes on vacation, what happens? Does anybody know? Right. And in some companies, I've seen them literally have a Google, a Google Doc spreadsheet that those key individuals have access to and they get the info in there. Now, in other industries that don't require ATSs, this can be a much easier closed loop system. Let's say you use HubSpot or Salesforce or something like that. You know, someone fills out a form, it kicks into HubSpot. You know, that is their CRM and their marketing platform. Uh, it sends an automated email so the person has a touch point uh, and then someone gets in touch. There's notes in the system. The deal is created. You know, it's completely documented. That's a beautiful thing. But in this wonderful staffing and recruiting industry, we need applicant tracking systems. And oftentimes, I mean, majority of the time that doubles as your CRM. Uh, and so you don't always have the luxury of saying, yep, everything's synced into Bullhorn. The form was filled out and we've got a great process. So if for the time being, it needs to be a little bit more manual until you get a system down, so be it. So anyway, all great things to think about when it comes to people coming in and marketing, creating those opportunities. Now let's chat for a little bit about nurturing the people you can help the most. Uh, you know, the loaded question, who is in your database? Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people are in your database. You know. The person that your top recruiter reached out to and is in a conversation with and you've only known them for two weeks, that person's in your database. And so is the person that submitted their resume 15 years ago who has since changed their email, changed their company five times and has no idea who you are, right? So whether you've got 10,000 people or 500,000 people, um, it is a complex beast. And in an ideal world, you've got that thing segmented. It is clean. Uh, the recruiters and AEs that are putting in information are all doing it the same way. Um, I know I can't see you and you can't see me, but I would imagine that that is not the reality of most, most people I'm talking to just because of the immense amount of data points that need to get entered and how many people are interacting with that system. 
but uh, I would imagine by default that you've got it broken down between clients and candidates. You've got their contact info. You've got uh, an owner over most of these individuals, hopefully, right? Uh, and and uh, someone that that owns that particular relationship. Um, you know how long they've been in the system, things like that. So let's chat for a little bit about how to use marketing automation to not only uh, increase your ROI, but also create efficiencies, which help your bottom line at the end of the day. So there's two main types of people in your database. We've got clients and we've got candidates. So let's talk about client prospects for a second. These are individuals that are in your database. You may have found them because you sponsored a conference uh, and you got the list. You've never talked to them, but you'd love to work with them, right? Things like that. Um, now you can create workflows for those individuals that provide things like uh, the eBooks that you've created and the blogs that are actually relevant to your practice areas, to the thought leadership that your audience cares about, as well as mixing in some sales messaging. Uh, on the candidate side, same thing, right? So if you've got a salary guide that would be interesting to either of those audiences, um, it's important to start dripping content out to them. Now, I know this premise is not new at all in our industry of, you know, having drip campaigns, having sales automations, you know, automating that process. But I do want to encourage you, yes, there's the sales side of it of here's who we are, here's how we can help, or I see these are your pain points, here's how we can help. Um, but think about the marketing side too, right? Especially in this uh, new era, you know, coming out of the pandemic, people are taking time to make decisions. And so you want to nurture and develop that relationship through great content. Uh, now, if we think about past conversations, uh, you know, this is honestly probably the biggest category of most databases. Uh, you know, here's a client you worked with once, but you don't work with them anymore, especially on the search side, right? You've done one search and, and nobody followed up on it. Um, staffing, I know that's much less common, right? You're either working with them or you're not. Uh, and then, I mean, I guess it all depends, right? There's variables to everything. Uh, but then on the candidate side, maybe you place them and they are in there, but you haven't worked with them for a while or you just had a conversation and it's not active right now. That is a massive opportunity. If you think about how much money our industry spends on ultimately getting new leads, whether clients or candidates, compared to how many people they already have in their database that they're not nurturing, it's massive. So think about that, right? Like how do you get in front of them with great information and build out workflows that touch them along the way? Uh, current partners. So on the client side, sometimes this ends up evolving to, you know, a monthly newsletter that keeps them abreast of the things that your company's doing and how you can help them. On the candidate side, this can be monumental. So let's say, for example, you focus on HR consulting, right? So you're placing mid to very senior level HR consultants, and they are currently out on contract. Now, how many touch points does your recruiter need to, to maintain over their six month contract? right? There's a handful of them. I mean, yes, there's a flurry right in the beginning with the onboarding process. Uh, but then what happens in one month? What happens in two months? What happens a month before their contract is up? Those are all opportunities that I would imagine your teams are discussing. Okay. Uh, you know, Jane, this is when you reach out and say, Hey, how's it going? If we're in the same city, do you want to grab a bite to eat? Right. Post, post pandemic, pre pandemic, um, you know, or did you know that we have this referral program? If there's anyone else like you that you think would have a fun time working with our clients, let us know, or Hey, your contract is actually coming to an end in a month. Let's touch base. You know, all of those touch points you can automate and they can still look like they're coming from the recruiter. Uh, and they go to that person. And if that person replies, it goes straight into the recruiter's inbox, but it's all tracked and synced through your ATS and through your marketing automation platform. So that's a beautiful thing. And then alumni, uh, very similarly, you know, let's say you've worked with a candidate in the past or you've worked with a client in the past. How are you staying top of mind and relevant to them? I would say, you know, the, the undiagnosed gold mine of the staffing and recruiting industry is the database. It is your ATS. So those are all great things to keep in mind. Um, you know, just one note, there are some companies that are small, especially on the search side, plenty on the staffing side that have not touched marketing automation. It's a phase two or three for them. And then there are other companies, uh, especially on the staffing side that have invested already quite heavily in Sense or Hearfish or something like that. And they've got a lot of workflows built out. 
this is not slowing down. Um, I would say this is incredibly important for you to keep in mind because your competitors are starting to evaluate this as well. Now, let's not forget to measure and adjust, right? So with all of these different elements, um, you know, top to bottom, whether you're uh, building a solid brand or showing up online in an authentic way, um, attracting great clients and candidates or providing that experience worthy of a referral and nurturing the people that matter the most. What happens if you just throw money at all this and you have no idea if it's working? I guarantee what's going to happen is you're just going to stop throwing money at it and either learn the hard way. Oh, shoot, it was working or learn the bummer of a way. Well, nothing changed. We just spent a load of money. So I would encourage you to review benchmarks, right? So some of these KPIs that are common to, to review are how much website traffic are you getting? How many conversions are you getting? What are your stats on LinkedIn? Uh, you know, how many ebook downloads? Like what kind of uh, measurements are you seeing with your marketing automation? I mean, there, there's so much that you can evaluate that honestly, it's kind of overwhelming. Uh, and a lot of the small to, you know, small to mid-sized firms we're talking to, um, you know, day in, day out, either have a marketer or maybe a marketing manager, um, probably outsourced, or they're just not doing it at all. And so if you right now are just getting an exported spreadsheet out of Google Analytics and you're like, well, I feel good that I get it, but I certainly never spend the time to look at it. It's something to think about, right? Set up a system that that you know, here are the key variables that I need to review. Um, I was actually just in a fireside chat with a friend, Derek Pitak. Uh, he has got a company called Beyond for Growth, and he specializes in EOS implementation, which is a business framework that helps uh, businesses really thrive. And one of the things he said was, if you are the visionary of a company and you're on a beach, you know, you're on an island somewhere, you got your drink. If you could only look at one scorecard, you literally could not call anybody in your company, but you could look at one scorecard and it would tell you the health of your company what would be on that scorecard. Now that refers to a whole lot more than your marketing, but your marketing is a big component of that. Um, and it's also important to keep in mind those seasonality trends, right? If you hire a marketing firm or a, a director of marketing and in two months, everything tanked, uh, you know, keep in mind, like, is that overlapping with your slow season or was the month prior amazing and the next month wasn't so great but what you didn't realize is that one of your key brand ambassadors was out on linkedin posting a webinar and it drove a ton of traffic to the site you know that's where these monthly and quarterly reviews really come into play to provide that narrative and that story behind the numbers so it's not just well the line is up into the right i think that's good or the line is down into the right you know all hands on deck what's going on um you know, I'll share a brief story with you guys. We we have a client who, uh, as we were evaluating their their uh, monthly traffic from organic, right? So people that were finding them through searches as well as through referral sources. Um, you know, naturally there's numbers that ebb and flow, but one month we saw a massive tank in their referral sources, and what we saw is that they had significantly less. Uh, traffic, you know, significantly less visits from Indeed. And they had made a business decision to stop investing in Indeed job slots, or uh, excuse me, you know, the sponsored jobs because it wasn't actually generating the quality of candidates they needed. Now that's a really big factor. If you just see your Google Analytics doc and see your website traffic tank 50%, that is like a scary choke on your drink moment, right? But if you understand that your business goals are all around attracting client leads, and the less website traffic that you're experiencing is because you're seeing less not quality candidates visit, that's actually okay, as long as all of the client related uh, measurements are up. So things to keep in mind. Um, I also want to encourage you to do true annual planning because that matters as well. Like if, if you're just shooting from the hip and saying, well, I don't know, I guess we'll just keep blogging. Like, what good is that going to do? You know, this world is changing very rapidly, um, especially with what we've seen in the last year. So take a step back and say, okay, this is how our social efforts are impacting business. This is how blogs and eBooks and paid and our website, but do we need to really invest in marketing automation? Or has it been four or five years since we redid our site and it just doesn't resonate with our audience anymore? You know, those are the types of things to bring up during that annual planning. Uh, and then I want to encourage you to create realistic expectations. <laughs> nothing, 
massive changes overnight. Yes, you can start a Google uh, ad campaign and see leads the very same day. Yes, that absolutely can happen. Um, but if you're doing things like optimizing your site for the first time or investing in really putting into place a true marketing automation uh, strategy, those things are not a one and done. They're ongoing. And so it's really important to think about your marketing the same way you think about building a great team of recruiters and salespeople and leaders. It's going to be around for the life of your company. Um, you may pull different levers at different stages to address different business goals. Uh, but if you're approaching it as a flavor of the month, no matter how great of a company you partner with, no matter how great of a marketer you hire internally and how great the strategies are, I guarantee it's not going to produce the results you want. So think about it as a long-term uh, play in, in benefiting and amplifying your business. So um, just a few more thoughts to share with you and then we'll open it up for Q&A uh, and feel free to jot in Q&A now and I'll be able to see that here shortly. Now we've addressed top five tips for ROI, right? building a solid brand that people trust, showing up in an authentic way, attracting great clients and candidates, providing an experience worthy of a referral and nurturing the people you can help the most. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I also want to leave you with a bonus. Uh, top 10 staffing technology trends. Uh, our friend in the space and industry, Maurice Fuller, I know he was recently just on uh, the World Staffing Session and he created Staffing Tech, and he also created this awesome list of top staffing technology trends. Now, I won't go through each of these one by one for time's sake. Um, this would be a great screenshot. I know Jan and Jacob have done a great job of posting these uh, after they've gone live, so you'll have access to it. You can also find it on Staffing Tech. Um, but these are some things coming down the pipe for our industry. Uh, mobile for staffing, right? So making sure everything is optimized, whether it's a website or an app. Uh, conversational systems like chatbots and ensuring that that um, ultimately speaks to your audience. Smarter AI and machine learning, which is coming down the pipe. Naturally, digital marketing is allowing you to drive clients and candidate engagement. Uh, data explosion. I mean, this really refers to you have so, so much information in your database and your ATS that you get to utilize as more and more technology comes out. Uh, 5G, literally your phone and how to step into some cool new features like augmented reality around test driving roles. Um, hyper automation, uh, digital engagement, autonomous staffing, remote first operations, all of these things basically say, all right, things are going to get automated. You know, people want to be talked to in a certain way and you got to get in front of it. It can't just be one to one conversations from here on out. And yes, that will always be a part of our our industry, it's very important. Um, but if you're not automating and you're not thinking about how uh, digital and just this whole new world is going to change the business, you're, you're a little behind compared to your competitors, right? So just start thinking about those things. Um, and then remote first operations is interesting, right? This whole uh, COVID process really just distributed or dispersed everybody to different parts of the country. Uh, and they're working from their homes. I know people are now starting to get back more into the office. Some never left their offices, um, but it is important to ensure that your remote employees are getting a great experience just like they would in office. Because at the end of the day, especially if we talk about the third audience, which we haven't addressed much in this presentation of your internal talent, right? Your internal recruiters, sales team, leadership team, if they can work for anybody anywhere, why are they working for you, right? So try to create an environment, whether that's, um, you know, virtual happy hours or social distant get togethers. And, you know, as, as different things are changing in our, uh, you know, post pandemic, hopefully soon to be, hopefully soon to be post pandemic world, it's becoming easier, but just think about that. Um, and then finally, I wanna leave you with one of my favorite quotes. Rome wasn't built in a day, but they were laying bricks every hour. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you on this call are uh, high achievers and very great people at what you do. Um, otherwise, you wouldn't be on here looking to better yourself and better your marketing in 2021. And if you're anything like me, you get impatient with what you have or haven't accomplished yet. And the biggest thing to keep in mind is as long as you're taking steps in the right direction every day, day in, day out, you will get there. That's how you grew your company. And that's exactly how it is with marketing. Uh, Parkamarketing.com does have a variety of free marketing resources. So 
um, I'd be curious to hear in comments, you know, are you the type of firm that, man, <laughs> this is exactly what you needed to hear and you got to start back at square one and reevaluate that brand? Or have you kind of smiled and nodded the whole way going, yeah, yeah, we've, we've been doing a good job. But here's a few key things that I think we could um, double down on uh, for the rest of the year and going into planning season, uh, even this fall, that that's going to help uh, create momentum for our staffing or recruiting firm. Um, would love to hear that. So I will pop out of screen share mode um, and then we can go ahead and jump into some Q&A. Jan, does that sound good to you? That's perfect, Kelly. Thank you so much. Yeah, if anybody has questions, uh, feel free to put them into the chat or in the Q&A section. Uh, there's two ways. You can go on the right-hand side to your chat. There is a Q&A button, uh, or you can just pop the question into the chat. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, Kelly. It was a great session. I really agree with all of the points, and I think they are super helpful, uh, specifically in these days. I think you know, staffing companies and recruiting companies definitely need to step up their game, specifically with their websites and their presentation. And so I, I see a lot of companies doing it really well, uh, but I see a lot of companies that can still benefit from some of the um, points that you just mentioned today. So thank you so much for that. Absolutely. And I'm scrolling through some of the questions. Um, you know, thank you everyone who mentioned that it was helpful with some good pointers. Uh, let's see. You know, I don't know that I see any formal questions. Jan, do you? No, I don't see any coming in. Um, we can wait another minute. If somebody has a question or a specific thing you want to ask Kelly, please let us know. Uh, otherwise, we'll share the um, session uh, as a recorded video uh, latest tomorrow or the, the day after uh, in an email. Uh, maybe Kelly has some other um, uh, attachments that she will share with you, maybe the presentation or some bonus uh, material that you'll be able to receive. Um, but otherwise, yeah, thank you so much, everybody, uh, for joining uh, the session today. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much. I would love to see for those who are on uh, scale of one to 10, scale of one to 10, uh, how, how would you rate and rank your marketing based on these, uh, you know, top five tips? Right? Are you are you at a one like oof, we really gotta get started? Or are you like, man, we're like a nine? I'm feeling good after seeing this. Uh, you know, I don't know that anybody has it fully figured out, but I've seen some companies that are doing very well. Um I see somebody six six, uh, seven point five. Um, very good. That I would say that's a strong point for our industry. Uh likewise, if you wanna write down, you know, areas that you want to think about, I would highly encourage you. I mean. This is scheduled until 1230. So I know at least it's on your calendar. Whether you stay on here this long or not, that's up to you. But spend literally even five minutes. Like set a timer on your phone. I mean, I know I get lost on Facebook for five minutes in a hot second. So, you know, set your timer for five minutes and jot down a bullet point list of things that you want to be thinking about for your company. And some of those may require, um, you know, some really tough conversations with your current internal team, right? Like, hey, recruiters, you guys are awesome, but start talking about thought leadership. Or it may, you know, if you want to ping me on LinkedIn and engage there, I'm happy to talk shop because you can tell I'm very nerdy and passionate about this industry. Um, I do see one question. Uh, please help us understand what autonomous staffing is in the 10 pointers. Yes. So let me let me pull that back up on my side. Um, and I will preface this by saying Maurice Fuller can go miles deeper than I can on that particular topic. Uh, so that refers to um, placements increasingly being made without a recruiter intervention. Um, from job matching to job alerts, the process will move faster than ever before. That's what I had on the slide. So I can speak to that here shortly or briefly. Um, you know, this whole process of autonomous staffing and AI, you know, there's so many industries that are like, man, is this going to be bad for us? Like, is this going to replace our jobs? Uh, and when I saw this in the top 10, when I was having a fireside chat with Maurice, um, one of the things he said was actually, no, this should be a really exciting thing for the recruiting industry because it will allow you to spend time on the higher touch points. Like no recruiter gets into the industry going, man, I really just want to do a Boolean search. Man, I really just want to spend time scheduling all day long with hiring managers and candidates. No, you probably got into it because it's fun to talk to people and it's fun to help companies hire great talent and all sorts of things like that. Um, you know, I see that Jan in the chat 
uh, just shared Maurice Fuller's LinkedIn in case anyone's curious. But yeah, ultimately it means the things that can be automated, uh, that's coming down the pipeline. So whether it is, um, you know, you plug in the credentials that you need for a job and instead of physically having to do a search in your ATS, your ATS already knows here are the top 15 candidates you should be checking out uh, based on the skill sets listed, the years of tenure, all of those things. Like that's that's where autonomous staffing is starting to go. So great question. Cool. Yeah, that's fantastic. I think, um, you know, Very in combination good. of, of um, we'll, we'll keep it open for just a couple more minutes before Jan shows us something really awesome uh, to see if there's any other questions that you guys want to jump in. But um, I will say before Jan shows us this. So uh, candidately, this tool he's going to show us, he showed me and I've already referred it to our sister company that does executive search and consulting to check out because I have not seen anything like it. And it's it's really cool. Um, I'm not being paid to say that. <laughs> I, I just cool. think it's a really awesome uh, tool. So I think that'll be fun for you guys. Cool. Thanks, Kelly, for uh, for sharing that. And I'll I'll briefly take a minute. It won't take long. I'll share my uh, screen with uh, everybody for uh, just a brief moment. Um, we are working on what we call Candidately. So hopefully you're able to see my screen. You can go to mm -hmm. candidate.li. Uh, uh, you'll find the website. We call it the storefront for your staffing business. So essentially what we try to achieve is help you be more present, obviously create a better brand for your staffing business by presenting candidates to your customers in a better way. So what the candidate product will give you is essentially a storefront where you can present candidates, uh, shortlisted candidates to a particular opportunity to one customer, or give your customers access to a talent pipeline that is curated by your team. As you can see on my screen, this is an example your profile uh, on candidate lease highly branded in your colors and your header and your customers can essentially find the candidates that you're presenting get in touch with you for a direct chat give you feedback easy access to all the candidates uh, that are available by your company this both helps you with candidate presentation and feedback so especially you don't have to constantly follow up with customers about specific uh, feedback and it also helps you to get some insights around the interactions with customers and obviously it gives you a nice sort of sort of say storefront uh, to get a better brand in the market so if you're interested in learning more about candidately and getting a quick demo uh, let us know uh, you can just uh, go to the poll section and press yes or you can uh, you know message me directly to jan at um that's it from my side. Um, yeah, thank you so much uh, for joining. Uh, if you still want to stick around, we have the networking section on the left-hand side. So uh, I see there's still a couple of people here. Uh, you can go in there and network with your peers. Or if you have any questions to Kelly, you can stay stick around and uh, ask questions in the chat. Uh, and also we'll post uh, Kelly's information and her contact details in the email tomorrow, uh, as well as here in the chat. So if you want to reach out to her uh, and, and her team uh, to learn more about Parker, please do so. Thank you, Jan. It was great joining you. And, and thanks, everybody, for asking great questions and being present. Thanks, Kelly. I appreciate you joining. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.